Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and welcome to the start of another weekly-ish reading vlog. So I've only done one official weekly reading vlog and it's time for number two. So this is officially a thing now. I'll probably just call it a weekly-ish reading vlog because I don't think I will be putting out weekly, weekly reading vlogs, but I would like to do this maybe twice a month. So weekly-ish reading vlog. It is time. And basically in this vlog, I am just going to take you guys along with me for the rest of the week. Today is Friday, so starting a weekly reading vlog on a Friday is a choice, but here we are. And I just have a bunch of different books, different genres, different things going on over the next few days, and I wanted to take you guys along and share my reading experience with you. Let's just get straight into it. I have already started one book. I also went to Sephora, and I wanna show you guys what I got. Um, let's talk about reading updates first and my reading plans for the week. So the first book that I am going to be reading in this vlog, and I have already Already started is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Akweke Amezi. I want to say first off, I'm absolutely loving this. It is fantastic so far. The writing is 10 out of 10. The characters are interesting and funny. I'm very curious to see where this goes. Um, I know it kind of takes a twist as the story goes on and I'm just very, very excited to see where we go with this character. So very quickly, if you do not know what this book is about, it is a romance, but I feel like it kind of teeters the line between uh, romance and literary fiction. And we follow our main character. Her name is Faye. And unfortunately, she lost the love of her life, her husband, five years ago in a car accident. She hasn't been with anyone or dated anyone since, but her friend Joy, who, side note, Joy is a joy. She is wonderful. I love her so much. She has been very encouraging to Faye, saying, hey, you need to get back out there, even if you're just, like, doing a one-night stand or dating. Like, I want you to find happiness again. So the book starts off with our main character uh, doing a one-night stand, and she ends up seeing this guy multiple times and also meets his friends. One of his friends is named Nasir, and Nasir and her start dating a little bit more seriously. They start to get to know each other. He learns her background and wants to be there for her. And he's very, very sweet. I do want to say right now, I love Nasir so much and I really, really want it to work out between them. However, I read The Dust Jacket because I was like, okay, where does this go beyond like her just dating and finding love and whatever? And I found out, and this is not a spoiler because it is on The Dust Jacket. So Faye is dating Nasir. Things are going well, but then she starts to fall for Nasir's dad. So that is what the turn is going to be. And I am excited because I think that's going to be very juicy. And I'm just so curious to see how that's all going to play out, how Nasir is going to react and joy and what Faye's reasons are and what the dad is like, who I have not met yet. I know that some of the tropes for this book are, you know, obviously like age gap, forbidden romance. So I think this is going to be really fun. As I said, like writing is 10 out of 10. I love it. It has that like pretty metaphorical, lyrical writing, but it's not too much. It's a nice balance. I feel like it's a very uh, quick and accessible read so far, but still has some really beautiful quotes. Quotes. I really love Faye and Joy's friendship. I feel like they have been depicted so well and I'm only on page 50, but I just feel like their friendship is really beautiful. I think that this author has really grasped female friendship very well already and their dialogue is so funny and so realistic. I feel like sometimes when friends are having conversations in books, it feels very over the top, but they feel very just down to earth and cool and it feels very normal and I don't know. I'm just, I'm loving this so far. It does take place in Brooklyn so far. I don't know if we're gonna go anywhere else, but we are in New York City and yeah. I have no complaints. I think this is a fabulous book so far and I'm very, very excited to see where it goes. It is a very short book, so I hopefully will finish it either today or tomorrow. The next book that I am planning on reading this weekend is I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I did buy the audiobook for this book because I've seen it everywhere. I'm very, very excited to read it. My friend Kara over at Kara's Bookshelf, she read it and she actually messaged me and was like, you need to read this and, and I will oblige her because anything Kara says goes. So I was planning on reading this anyway, but like with Kara being like, no, you should read it. I wanna prioritize it. If you do not know what this book is, it is a nonfiction memoir that is definitely not like my genre. I used to read a lot of nonfiction um, when I was in college, but it's just not really something that interests me anymore. But Jeanette McCurdy was a child star on Nickelodeon. She was in iCarly as Sam. And then I believe she also had a spinoff called Sam and Cat, but I had kind of grown out of Nickelodeon by that point. So I never saw the spinoff, but I'm very familiar with Jeanette McCurdy as Sam on iCarly because I absolutely loved that show. However, this memoir does talk about the trials and tribulations and horrible things that she went through as a child actor. And I know there's a ton of trigger warnings for this book. I will talk about them once I get to the book, but I am planning on listening to that audiobook this weekend. Jeanette McCurdy narrates it, which is very cool. I love when authors do that. And I've just heard wonderful things. I heard it makes you laugh and cry and it's really, really sad and really, really painful. But I think it's really cool that Jeanette McCurdy wrote this book. And I just, I appreciate her bravery because I have been watching interviews of her over the last few years, kind of building up to this book being published. And I just kind of knew like the tip of the iceberg of some of the things that she went through, but I definitely 
definitely think there's way, way more to be found there. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to read it. Even though I know it's gonna be a tough read, I'm, I'm just looking forward to kind of what I can gain from it and the appreciation that I have for her for writing this and just, I don't know. I think it'll be good. I'm an early 2000s kid, so I'm very, very curious to see about her story. And you know, no matter how tough it is, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading about it. Okay, and then, because that's two books, but this book is very short. I'm gonna finish it soon. And then Jeanette McCurdy's memoir. The audiobook is like less than seven hours, so I think I'm gonna finish that so fast. I'm probably not gonna speed it up too, too much because I want to listen to her. Kara said that like her inflection on the audiobook was really, really, you know, entertaining. And I know that she cries while she's reading the book and gets kind of choked up. So I don't wanna like turn it up to three times speed or anything. Like I, I wanna really like soak in the story, but that's still very, very quick. That's a very short audiobook. So I'm gonna need other books and I am kind of, getting a little bit of the fantasy bug. As you guys know, like, I'm such a summer person, but I, the other day, got a singular whiff of a pumpkin candle, and now I'm kind of excited for fall. I don't know what to say. And when fall and winter are here, I am much more of a fantasy person. Definitely gonna be like fantasy romance, but I don't know. I've kind of just been thinking about fantasy books lately, and I really want to pick some up, but I don't know what I want to pick up. So, what else I'm going to read in this vlog is a mystery, not only to you, but also to me. There is another book that is a potential contender, and that is The Air by Sophie Lark, which is the first book in, I believe, the Kingmaker series, which is her dark mafia romance academy series. I say that I might read this one, even though I just said I want to read fantasy, but I might want to read this one because low-key, this book has been on my, like, mental TBR every month for the last, like, four or five months, because I always, I just, like, oh, I need to pick that series up. I really, really need to. Then I just don't. So I really want to read this book. I really want to read this whole series and I really think that I would enjoy it. So there is potential. I will read this book, I'm Glad My Mom Died, The Air by Sophie Lark, and then maybe a fantasy book. I don't know. We're all over the place and this could all change. These are all things that are very subject to change. I am also listening to the audiobooks for Empire of Storms and Power of Dawn because I'm doing the tandem read for my Throne of Glass reread, but I don't really think I'm going to vlog that. Like, it's Throne of Glass the books are good, don't really have anything else to say. So that is it for kind of the plans for the week. Now, for those of you who may be interested in what I bought at Sephora today, I have just been like so sick of my eyeshadow routine. I don't know, I just haven't been loving it lately. So I went to Sephora under the guise of buying an eyeshadow palette. That eyeshadow palette that I wanted to buy was the Makeup by Mario like mattes eyeshadow palette. It wasn't there. I ended up ordering it online because I want it that bad, but I bought a different eyeshadow palette uh, as well. And then I bought a bunch of other things that I may or may not have needed to buy, but I did and I'm very happy that I did. So the first thing I bought is like a major throwback for me. This was a palette that I used so much my freshman and sophomore year of college. It is not even funny. And that is the, it is the Tartlet in Bloom palette. I feel like this is a very OG palette, especially if you watched like beauty YouTube back in 2016 and 2017, just like neutrals basically but it smells like, oh my god, it smells like icing or cupcakes or something, I don't know, but it smells delicious and is just kind of a nice neutral palette, which is really what I'm looking for these days. I don't really like too colorful of eyeshadow, so that is a good neutral palette for me. The next thing that I got is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer, and Ambient is the particular shade that I got. This is also a throwback product that I used to use all the time, and basically what it is, it's just a like luminous bronzer because a lot of my bronzers are matte, which is good. It kind of just wanted a more glowy bronzer so I bought this because it's a subtle glow which is what we like sort of a glow from within so I am excited to use this and then I got a lip gloss from Patrick Ta I love Patrick Ta's whole makeup line everything I've used I haven't used too many of his products I've used like a couple lip products lip liner um, I've also used a blush but they've all been fantastic and it is just the major volume gloss in the shade superficial which I love I love the name I love the packaging it's all super super cute okay Okay, and then I got Isle of Paradise Self Tanning Drops. So this is something that my sister has used and she's recommended to me many times and I finally picked it up because I use self tanner on my body. I use Loving Tan. If anyone's curious, the Loving Tan mousse is like the best self tanner I've ever used and I've used them all. So I use Loving Tan on my body, but I don't use it on my face because it does kind of leave a film and it just feels gross. And so I normally just don't really tan my face at all, but I would like to tan my face just for the product that isn't going to leave like this gross feeling on my skin. So these are like water droplets 
droplets, but they are self tanner. Don't know how it works, but basically you drop a couple of these into your moisturizer, like your daily moisturizer that you use, and allegedly it tans your face. So we shall see. I'm excited to use this because this could be a game changer because I feel like it will leave my skin feeling clean, but also tan my face, which is very fun. So I'm going to try this out, we'll report back. And then the last thing I got is the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask. This is a very popular product. This is actually the smaller version. It's kind of like the sample size. Uh, it's actually pretty big though still, I would say for a mask, but the original size is very, very expensive. So I wanted to make sure that I liked it first, but it's just a moisturizing mask that you can put on and you can actually leave on. It just seeps into your skin and you don't have to wash it off. So I'm gonna try this tonight and I'm very excited about that. And if I like it, I will buy the bigger version. So that is it, you guys. I am going to go um, eat some lunch and edit and start reading more of You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. And I will report back with reading updates. Okay, hi besties. So it is time for another reading update and it's a very exciting reading update because spoiler alert, I have finished two books since I last talked to you guys, which is crazy. I am in a huge reading mood and I am so, so glad for it. So last night I did read a little bit more of You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. And then I sort of just hung out, took a bubble bath, you know, chilled, had a little self-care night. And then this morning I woke up and decided I wanted to finish that book and get it done because I was really close to the end. So I did finish You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty sort of in the late morning. And oh my God, I absolutely loved this book, you guys. I did give it five stars. It was a really, really easy five star for me. I couldn't give it anything less. Like it just, everything worked for me. Every element was really, really well done, I think. And I just think that this book was absolutely beautiful. So I will say just a little bit more about the plot before I go into sort of my review. So where I left off, Nasir and Faye have kind of developed this friendship slash relationship. And Nasir ends up inviting Faye to go to his home country and visit his family and also partake in this sort of like art showing, gallery showing. I hadn't mentioned this yet, but Faye is an artist and Nasir's father has these kind of artistic connections and there's this very big event happening and he's like, let's go. It'll be a great work opportunity for you and we can spend time together and all of that. So Faye agrees. She's a little bit reluctant, a little bit nervous, but she decides to go. When she gets there, she meets Nasir's dad and Nasir's dad is named Alim and she automatically thinks this man is so attractive. Oh my God. She also realizes she recognizes him because he is not just Nasir's dad, Alim. He is Alim Blake, who is this like Michelin star star, super famous, worldwide known chef. So she kind of loses her mind because Nasir did not warn her of this, but she is very taken by Alim and not only does she think he's super handsome, but She's a little intimidated, a little starstruck, feels a connection with him and is very, very curious to get to know him. So as she spends time at Nasir's beautiful family home and gets to know him a little bit better, they realize that they have a lot in common. They have uh, both been through very, very hard things that have shaped them to be the people that they are today. They can relate on a lot and some things happen. So that's all I'm gonna say about the plot, but I just loved this book so, so much. I think the characters were so well written, first of all. I already said like the writing is fantastic, but I feel like all the characters are very well defined and different and sort of exist on their own. And I just think that they were very fleshed out, which I really enjoyed. I loved seeing Alim and Faye's sort of connection. They connected on a lot. They had a lot of deep talks. We dove into grief and how that shapes you and how it shapes your future relationships and kind of moving on and can you move on and all of those those things. So I really appreciated the depth that that added to the novel. But overall, at the same time, it was very fun. And like, there was a lot of tension. And I just I loved everything. I even like on a superficial level, like the setting was just beautiful. They were in the Caribbean. I forget exactly what island I will specify here, um, if I'm able to find it. But the setting was just tropical and beautiful and that was really noted on. And then of course, because Alim is like this renowned chef, there were really great descriptions of food, which I always appreciate in books. I don't know why, but I just think it like transports you into the novel a little bit more. So I really loved that. And I really, really enjoyed Faye's sort of journey that she went through, the sort of emotional and mental journey that she went through because in the beginning of the book, she is so thinking that like, she will always just be sort of Jonah's widow and who is her deceased husband. You know, that never changes. That's still kind of the love of her life but she sort of learns through these experiences and these interactions with all these different people who come into her life, how to grow a little bit beyond that, which was really, really beautiful. It also had spice. I know that there's a lot of people who are disappointed that this book does not have any spice in it, but 
just side note, please don't let that stop you from reading this book. But there is spice in You Made a Fool, which was very nice. Oh, I also want to say, no spoilers, but I need to say this. Every positive thing I said about Nasir yesterday, I would like to formally retract because absolutely not. But anyway, the book was fantastic. It was beautiful. Writing was great. Characters were wonderful. The romance was very, very well done and tension filled and angsty and steamy. So I have no complaints. I think it's a fantastic book. It is such a summery tropical vibe and I just loved it. It was perfect. And then after finishing that book, I was definitely like on a high. I wanted to read more. I was excited. So I did decide to pick up I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy, which as I said yesterday, this is her nonfiction memoir. This is her telling her life story a child actor, the uh, struggle through that, and then also talking about the abuse that she went through from her mom. So she did suffer through physical, sexual, verbal, emotional abuse from her mom, and it's a really, really tough, tough story, but I did really, really enjoy it. I thought this book was just, it was fantastic. It was so well done. Jeanette McCurdy is such an amazing writer, first of all, and the story, I just, I couldn't get enough of it. Even though it was very, very painful at times, I really appreciated the way that she crafted the novel, and it just kept me really, really engaged. I was pretty much drawn in from page one. The prologue is so sad. I do just want to say like before I talk anymore about my review, there are um, a lot of trigger warnings with this book. Definitely be aware of them. Do more of your own research on them, but there are trigger warnings for, as I said, you know, physical abuse, sexual abuse, mental, emotional, verbal abuse, trigger warnings for eating disorder. That is a huge, huge, huge topic in this book, anorexia and bulimia, and it was extremely tough to read, also substance abuse. So definitely take care of yourself and look at these trigger warnings before you start this book. It was really, really fantastic, but it was incredibly hard to read sometimes. I really did enjoy getting to hear more of Jeanette's backstory, and it's just so crazy to look back on me loving and watching iCarly as a child, and then seeing this actress who you just think like, oh, her life must be so perfect and so fantastic, and she talks about what she was going through at the time that she was filming at Carly, and it was literally terrible. And I'm just so like, so touched by her story, so broken hearted by her story. And I just, this book was amazing. I have literally nothing negative to say about this book. It was so, so fantastic. I think that if the trigger warnings are not gonna be something that would turn you off from the book, definitely check it out. Especially I think if you grew up watching Jeanette McCurdy on iCarly, it just gave me this whole other viewpoint of her story and that show. And like, I still enjoy the show and everything, but I just, wow, like I cannot believe what she has been through and the fact now that she's just able to talk about it so like clearly and you know hopefully help people I think is just like a testament to how strong she is and how much progress she has made in her life and it was fantastic five stars it was really emotional but it was fantastic okay so now I am going to talk about my plans for my next book in this vlog because we've already finished two books in this vlog and it's only been like a day and a half, which is fantastic. I'm really, really close to hitting my Goodreads goal of 100 books. I feel like that's kind of why I'm motivated to read a lot. And I think I'm on like book 93, which is very exciting because last year I only read 77 books total. So feeling good. I did just want to say though, I wanted to show you guys two books that I got in the mail and I actually got these in the mail last week, but I don't have me unboxing them on camera because a little bit of a story time. So last week I was working on a Kindle Unlimited romance reading vlog and I finished it and once I was done I was just really not happy with it. I don't know, I don't know what it was, but I just wasn't happy with the end result, the end product, and I ended up scrapping the vlog. And it's hard to explain, like there wasn't anything like super bad that stood out to me in the vlog, but it just wasn't something that I wanted to continue with. I don't know, I, I can't really describe it, but I'm moving on, we're making this vlog, so here we are. But unfortunately, because I will not be uploading that vlog, I don't have my reactions to opening these things on camera, but I wanted to show you guys anyway, because I'm very excited about them. One of the books that I read for that vlog was Blindside by Candy Steiner, loved it, four stars. And I did end up getting the physical copy of this book. It's like a limited edition, special edition, a copy of this book. And it was really, really beautiful. So I wanted to show you guys. This is a KU sports romance with fake dating. And it was so, so good. This is marked as a standalone on Goodreads, but the epilogue definitely kind of alludes to there's going to probably be like a companion novel following different characters. I'm very, very excited for that. But this book was so great. So, so fantastic. A really, really well done fake dating romance, in my opinion. I loved it. So I had to get the physical copy because I think it's really, really beautiful. And then the lovely Sam from Sam Reads a Little sent me a book and I was totally like shocked that she sent me something and I'm just so grateful. So I definitely wanted to talk about this book again since I didn't get my reaction on camera. And she got me Redeemed by Lauren Asher, which is the fourth book 
book in the Dirty Air series, which is an F1 sports romance. I haven't read the third one yet, so I need to read that one. And then she and I are going to buddy read this together and it is the finale of the series. And I'm very excited for this one because it has my favorite boy in the series. This is Santiago's book and he's like the nice one out of all of the F1 drivers. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope he is still nice in this book though, because I don't really know the setup of this couple because the girl's name is on the back and I do not know this woman. She was not in the first and second book. I don't think so. I have a feeling the third book, which is wrecked, is probably going to set up Santiago and this girl's relationship. But I'm really, really excited. Sam, I am so, so grateful to you for sending this to me. Thank you so, so much. You did not have to do that. And it just like blows me away. Just how many amazing friends I've made on booktube. I'm going to have Sam's channel linked down below. Make sure that you guys go and subscribe to her. So the next book that I'm going to be reading for this vlog is kind of a dark horse. It was not a book that I was planning on picking up anytime soon, but it caught my eye today. And I decided, you know what? I'm gonna read it. The next book that I will be reading is called Nightshade by Carrie Lake. So this is a paranormal romance and it's like dark and gothic. So I think this is gonna be a really fun read. It doesn't have too many reviews on Goodreads. I only have two friends, it seems like, who have read this book, but they both gave it five stars, which is very exciting. And I kind of did a brief scroll through Goodreads of this book and sort of its profile, and there was like only four and five star reviews. So I stopped looking there and I was like, okay, cool, I'm excited. I don't know too much of what this book is about. One of my friends on Goodreads, they did a review for it and they said it's better to not know a lot going into it. So I'm excited about that. I love when people say that because I just know that that means means like there's gonna be some interesting and juicy things in store for me. But I will say this book is set in a world where we have like a purgatory type place and it's called Nightshade. And our main character's dad, I think is really obsessed with it. And then for one reason or another, a demon like morally gray, very handsome man comes into the picture and is the love interest. So I'm very, very excited. Some of the tags for this book were like obviously paranormal romance, but also angels and demons, which I love any book that has angels and demons involved. Also kind of a fun, funny little thing. Um, after I saw the angels and demons tags, I went and looked how long the book was. And at least the Kindle version is 666 pages, which is very fun. So I'm just excited to read this. I think it's gonna be kind of a cool, gothic, fall-ish vibe. And now I'm kind of in the mood for fall. Got a fall candle, going to read this book. I think tonight I'm gonna put on like some type of spooky or gothic or fall ambiance and read this book. So I'm very excited to start it. I really, really hope I like it. Fantasy romance on KU. And I am gonna lump paranormal romance into fantasy romance for the sake of this point I'm going to make, but Fantasy Romans on KU is so hit or miss. Like it's like hit or miss. Like it's a major difference. And I'm just so sad because I love the genre so, so much. I love romance stories set in fantastical worlds. Like that is always what I'm looking for. I of course love contemporary romance, but I just find the possibilities are endless when we have a romance set in a fantasy setting. But I feel so disappointed by a lot of fantasy romances lately. I really only have one or two that I absolutely love and would like honestly recommend. The rest have been like very average experiences or bad experiences. So I am like so hopeful that Nightshade works out. There's a lot of really, really good reviews, but I don't know. I want to find some fantasy romances that work for me. So fingers crossed that this is going to be it. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm probably just going to go watch a little bit of booktube right now. I've read a lot today, so I want to take a break. And then tonight I will start Nightshade and I will talk to you guys once I am a little bit into it. Hey everyone. So time for another reading update. I also went to Barnes & Noble this morning. I didn't film when I was in there. I didn't get any b-roll because I suck at getting b-roll and just like remembering that I'm a booktuber. So unfortunately I don't have like any clips of me shopping or anything, but I will make up for it with a cheeky little book haul here because I got some really, really good books. I also have reading updates for Nightshade by Carrie Lake, but let's do Barnes & Noble stuff first because I'm very, very excited. I went to Barnes & Noble this morning with the intention of getting a certain series that I missed out on when it came out. It's a very popular popular series, but I have never read it. And it's one of those series that I just feel like you gotta read. You know, if you're a fantasy lover, if you grew up during this time, it's like a rite of passage, right? Like everyone's gotta do it. And it's a series that I've always wanted to read and I figure, oh, I'll get to it one day. I don't really know. But I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy it. I'm in the mood for fantasy. I'm in the mood. I mean, this is like fantasy, but it's like dystopian. So I don't really know. I'm just very excited to read this series. The Hunger Games trilogy by Suzanne Collins. So I haven't read any of the books and I have only seen the first movie. I did go to like the midnight premiere of the first movie because I had some friends who were into the books and watched the movies. So I've seen the first movie, loved it, fantastic, but I have not seen the other movies and haven't read the books at all. So I have absolutely no idea where this story goes. So I'm excited because this is a pretty fresh series for me. It's not like Twilight where I read Twilight for the first time last year 
but I had seen the movies a million times before that, so I definitely knew how things ended. I have no idea what happens in this series, so I'm excited. I am thinking about doing just like a little Hunger Games, full spoilers, reading vlog. Um, I think that would be really fun because obviously this is a huge, like, huge, huge series and was very impactful, I feel like, on the YA genre and very impactful on what a book to movie adaptation could be. Like this and Twilight were so, so big during their time. So I don't know, I think I might vlog my reading experience with this because I think it would be really fun. And I've just heard like excellent things about the series regardless of the adaptation. I've just heard it's very well done, very well written, and I'm excited to dive into this. Okay, so then when I was at Barnes & Noble after I grabbed the Hunger Games trilogy, I wasn't really sure if I was going to get anything else but there is a book that I have been meaning to get and I figured I would have to order it because I did not think that it was sold at my Barnes & Noble. So I perused over to the romance section which is where you can find me most days in Barnes & Noble and I went to Lauren Asher's section because I really wanted to get the third book in the Dirty Air series. I have the first one and I have the fourth one because Sam gifted it to me and I really need the third one. I'm not getting the second one because I read it on Kindle Unlimited and it was terrible so I will not be acknowledging that the one exists. So I went over to Lauren Asher's section and I've never seen the Dirty Air series there before. I always just see like the fine print and terms and conditions, but they had the third book in the Dirty Air series, which was so cool. And they only had the third book, which was very interesting. It was like exactly what I was looking for. And there were tons of copies of only the third book. It felt meant to be, I had to get it. So I'm very excited. This is Jax and Elena's story. Jax is another guy in the series that I really, really like. And he's sort of got that party boy reputation that the guys in the first two books had and then he has a romance with his team's PR person which I think is going to be so much fun. I'm planning to read this soon either end of August or early September because I am going to an F1 race. We are going to Italy in September and we're gonna go see an F1 race at Monza and so I want to like bring this and like read an F1 book like on the way there and like have a little F1 moment and just like make it a whole thing. I'm very excited so I now have the completed series <laughs> one, three, and four, we are pretending two does not exist in my eyes. So um, I'm really excited about this. And speaking of Italy, so I will be going on vacation in September. I will have pre-filmed videos though. So you guys will not be missing out on any content, but I did want to ask you guys about like in Italy, vlog. So I do want to vlog the trip. It's not going to be like a full travel vlog like I'm I'm just not that girl like I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull something like that off but I would love to vlog the trip one for like myself and Sean for us to have memories and to look back on two I just think it would be really fun and really interesting and fun to share on my channel but I do want to keep it like slightly bookish and I am obviously probably not going to be reading that much on this trip I'm going to try I'm gonna bring books with me and like if I read great if I don't that's fine too but I do have very long flights so I imagine I will maybe get a book or two read. I don't know. I'm not setting myself up for like anything. I'm not putting a TBR for like my vacation or anything, but I'm gonna bring books and see what I get done. We also do want to go to some bookstores in Italy, and I guess I'm just curious. I would just love feedback on if I did like Italy vlogs, do you guys care about how I format it or how would you like me to format it? I was thinking of kind of doing just kind of like half lifestyle, half bookish. I'm just curious what you guys would like to see. I think it would be really fun, kind of no matter what it ends up being. Okay, and then I did pick up a totally random book at Barnes & Noble. I have not like, I mean, this book is on like my want to read on Goodreads, but it's not a book that I particularly have in the back of my mind of, oh my God, I need to read that. I just feel myself entering this fantasy mood and I want to kind of buckle up for it and have lots of options because I do have a lot of fantasy series and I have a lot of completed fantasy series, but it's also kind of nice to have shorter standalone fantasies. I will say I'm not 100% positive if this is a standalone. I think it is from how it looks on Goodreads. I think it is. If it's the first book in a series though, I'm that's totally fine. But I picked this next book up because it does have like very good reviews from a lot of my friends on Goodreads and it is a YA fantasy, but I don't know. I'm very curious about it and just the reviews get me excited. And that is House of Salt and Sorrow by Erin A. Craig. Don't know a ton about this one, but I do know there's like mystery and murder, but it's like YA fantasy. And one of the blurbs got me 
very excited. Somebody said it's a fairy tale young adult romance, it's haunting, mesmerizing, but yeah people are saying gothic fairy tale, beautiful and a bit creepy. I love that. Anything beautiful and kind of creepy I'm very into. Okay so now let's talk about Nightshade because I have done a bit of reading on that book. I am at the 25% mark. It is going well and I'm excited about it. So let me try to talk about this book in like the quickest and most succinct way I can. There's a lot going on. I want to say that at first. It's a very hard book for me to like attempt to describe. As I was getting ready today I was like kind of like rehearsing in my head how am I going to talk about this book and it's difficult so just walk with me on this one. So this is, as I said, paranormal romance, and we have two storylines that we are following. The main storyline, the present day storyline, follows Farron Ravenshaw. Farron lives in Chicago. She is a PhD student, and her main focus and main study is religious studies, theology, Christianity, history, kind of all of that. She's very much into religion, and that's kind of her main gig. In the beginning of the book, she's approached by a homicide detective, which is very strange, obviously, because she's like, I'm just some random PhD student, what do you want with me? But this homicide detective comes to her because there have been a number of murders around Chicago and the victims have been left with a religious symbol of some sort on their bodies. This religious symbol was traced back to this unknown, kind of unsure if it's a real thing, but has a very weird history, religious cult. And the one person who knows the most about this assumed religious cult was Farron's father, who was like the head of the religious studies program I believe at Yale. He was, you know, incredibly regarded for theology and religion and all of the studies surrounding that. He also was extremely obsessed with this religious cult and the purgatory that they talked about in this religious cult called Nightshade. He unfortunately though became so fanatic about it and people started to discredit him, thought he was mentally ill. He did try to drown Farron as well, kind of during all of this hysteria many years ago. He was discredited, people kind of stopped believing him, and he has since gone missing or is presumed dead. There's a video of him jumping off a building but his body was never found so there are very mysterious circumstances around his death but basically the homicide detective comes to Farron because he thinks that well your dad is dead and you were the closest to him and you study something similar you probably have some old texts of his let's see if you can help us make a connection. So this launches Farron into kind of delving into more history of her dad and his studies and all of his you know notebooks and notes and things like that and this kind of opens up a can of worms an angelic and demonic can of worms and a lot of crazy things start happening to her, paranormal things start happening within her home, and it takes her on a bit of a journey. Now in the other storyline that we have, which I imagine takes place maybe in like the 1600s, I'm not entirely sure what century we are in and I don't know if it clarified, but the reason I think it's around like the 15 or 1600s is because we open the novel, our main character in this storyline is named Lastina, and we open the novel with her watching her mother be burned at the stake by the church because they think she's a witch. So you know kind of like Salem witch trials, that type thing is happening and after Lestina's mother is murdered she is an orphan and the church takes her in and she basically works at a convent type thing and basically has to earn the church's trust back because they think that oh you could be bad too you could be a witch too you need to repent for your mother's sins and she starts taking part and assisting with like exorcisms and she like meets this very mysterious guy and she has lots of questions about the church and her mom and everything so these two storylines are you know going on I imagine we're going to connect at some point no clue what the connection is and then we we have another POV, but it is like way less frequent of a man named Jericho Van Croy. So Jericho Van Croy is, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. He has black wings. I don't know if he's an angel, a demon, some type of hybrid, something I don't know yet, but he is a very mysterious being. And all we really know about him so far is the world kind of views him. And by the world, I mean either our world or the world that he exists in. There's like parallel universes on top of each other. There's a lot happening in this book, you guys. I'm sorry if you're listening to me explain this and you're like, what the hell is this book about? Couldn't tell you, to be honest with you. I'm trying here. But in whatever world he exists in, people sort of view him as the Grim Reaper and he is like synonymous with death. But he doesn't kill people. He doesn't like end people's life and take them away. It's kind of like death has already come for them, but then he takes them to Nightshade, I think. Think. And Jericho and Farron have some kind of connection. Don't know what it is, but there's been a lot of clues leading to this. And that's what the book is about so far. I'm editing that. It's going to be a nightmare. Oh my god. Okay. So I do want to say I'm really liking the book so far, though. I know that's a lot of information. It's just, it's a great big wide world in this book and I'm kind of trying to keep up but I'm really really liking the book. I will say the vibes are like 10 out of 10. It is gothic, paranormal, 
angels, demons, cults, like it's it's all there. It's spooky. Farron has a black cat that everyone's afraid of. I'm really, really loving the vibes. It's a perfect fall book. If I end up liking this book and recommending it to you guys, I 100% recommend you read it in October because it has those like feelings. I like the writing. I think it's pretty simple and straightforward. And then there is a lot of, you know, obviously we're talking about religion and just theology and cults and all of that stuff. I am not a religious person at all, but I find religion to be fascinating. And I really love when a book or a movie or TV show kind of has some roots within religion and sort of, you know, takes it from there. I think it can be very interesting. I just find it all very fascinating. So I'm loving it. Angels and demons and cults, and it's kind of spooky. And there's a hot morally gray love interest. Like that absolutely ticks all the boxes. I'm very excited. So as I said, I'm 25% into the book. We just got to kind of where I've been waiting for Farron's story to get to. She has arrived in a new location, I will say. And there was a scene that I just read that I really enjoyed because it reminded me so much of the scene in Dracula when the main character is kind of riding in a carriage on his way to Dracula's castle. Farron has a very similar scene where she's riding through the woods and she arrives at this cathedral turned home. There's a lot going on, but I'm engaged. I'm very, very engaged and I'm excited to see where it goes. So I am going to go and read a bit more today. I would hopefully like to finish this book in the next maybe two or three days. So that is it for now. I will talk to you guys when I have another update for Nightshade. Hello friends. So it is time to close out this reading vlog because I actually ended up finishing Nightshade last night. I feel very conflicted about this book. I have positive feelings and negative feelings and it was kind of hard for me to come up with my final wrap-up, final thoughts on this book to tell you guys about it. So I apologize if this is kind of all over the place. I do just want to say first off, I ended up giving this book three stars. I was sort of hoping that it was going to make it to four stars, but there were just some sort of technical things that I couldn't really look past and did sort of deter my enjoyment of the book. So I went with a three star rating. It is not a bad book by any means, but it just had some issues. I will say the ambiance, the vibes, the gothic paranormal goodness was five out of five. It was fantastic. Stand by that. I think that the world that Carrie Lake created and the ambiance was wonderful. I think both romances were were interesting and fun to follow. There were some kind of off moments, but I would say overall the romance was like pretty decent, I would say. I thought that the plot lines, some of the plot lines, were really cool, really interesting, and fun, and I am mildly curious to see what happens in the second book. It is a duology, so maybe I will pick up the second one, but I will say the things that I did not really enjoy about this book, and the reason that I'm not going to be giving it any higher than a three-star rating, is number one, there were so many plot lines, you guys, in this book. Like, there's so much going on, and I feel like eventually we got lost. I feel lost. I feel like anyone reading this book would kind of just be like, okay, what's going on? There's a little bit uh, too many connections, too many things going on, and it kind of felt clunky and sort of all over the place. And I feel like the structure of the story wasn't very fluid. And I found myself being a little bit confused at times. I found myself kind of questioning, have we gotten an explanation for this thing yet? Maybe we did, no, I don't know. So it kind of left me wondering about a few things. I will also say this book is way too long and it's 600 something pages. And truly, I think if this book was like 200 pages shorter, like a full 200 pages, if it was around 400 something, I might have given this book a four star. It was way, way too long. It took way too long for us to get to where we needed to in this story. And I don't think that the story would have suffered if it was shorter. Like, I truly think if we had cut down some of the needless parts of this book, it would have been a better crafted novel and a better crafted story. And I think it would have piqued my interest a little bit more because there were times where I was just like, okay, like we get it. Kind of a slog to get through at times. So yeah, I mean, truly, if this book was shorter, it might have gotten a better rating from me. And, uh, you know, the ending, I was kind of like, mm, okay, also, I don't really know. I don't really know how I feel about the ending. It was all right. And as I said, I am mildly curious to continue on with the second one. I don't think I'm going to rush out and read it, but overall, not a bad book, not my favorite, but it did sort of itch that scratch that I had for like a paranormal or fantasy romance, so I enjoyed that. I definitely want to try to find other like gothic paranormal romances. If you guys have any recommendations that are good, um, go ahead and leave them down below because I wanted this book to be so great, and for a while I thought it was going to be, but it just like didn't hit the mark for me, so it was okay 
three star. It was fine. It exists. And that's that. All right, guys. So that is it. I'm going to wrap up this weekly reading vlog here. If you made it to this point in the video, go ahead and leave the cat emoji. My cat is staring at me over here, so she wants to be included. So go ahead and leave the cat emoji if you would like. As always, my Instagram and my Goodreads are linked down below. You are welcome to follow me on there at any time. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you are having a fantastic day and I will catch you guys in the next one.